the Share Pickers podcast. And joining me on the podcast and live on video, Russ Mould, Investment Director at Stockbroker, AJ Bell. You're Russ. Very well, Justin. How are you? Hope you had a good Easter. Yeah, you. Well, yeah, I've heard a bit too much as always. It seems like all Christian festivals are based around stuffing yourself with food, <laughs> you know, like Christmas and Easter and all that. Some truth in that, I think. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, you know what? It, we're just saying there. I mean, I'm not a big fan of bank holidays. I like the markets being open when it's <laughs> a Friday and a Monday. Thing. Where's it all going? I want to. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't mind the markets being shut, and I don't have to look at the screen, but. Short weeks just kill all my deadlines. I'm I'm just completely discombobulated with a four day week yeah. last week and a four day week this week. I barely know what day of the week it is at the minute. So I'm a little bit bereft, but I'll do my best to help as as, as, as I can. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's have a, a, let's have a quick look at the market today uh, on a Tuesday. And you did mention commodities last week. This is the FTSE 100. Look at all the yeah. biggest rises, as you mentioned just before we came on. Fresenio. Anglo American, Shell, BP, Glencore, Rio Tinto, uh, Centrica, and Vegasta. All of them. Well, that's much. a full amount. Awesome. There you go. All 10. Yeah. There you go. That's unbelievable. So uh, I, I, I guess there probably, it's, it's, I can assure you, it's nothing to do with my words last week. I'm sure your podcast has got far more influence than I do. But I think one thing that is interesting there is we saw, I think last Friday when you were eating all your Easter eggs, probably, and I was yeah. eating hot cross buns in a local bakery, that um, the US Personal Consumption Expenditure Index. Uh, the, allegedly, the Fed's preferred measure for inflation that yeah. accelerated to 2.6 percent year on year from 2.5. Okay, not a big deal, but it yeah. still accelerated month on month. U.S. producer price indices have done the same, and consumer price indices have done the same. So, th this narrative that we've become accustomed to from an equity market perspective of cooling yeah. inflation, a soft landing, and a pivot to interest rate cuts is now perhaps coming under duress, at least in the US, from an interest from a, from an interesting point of view. If anything, we'd have probably thought the bigger danger was recession. If anything, it now may be that the economy is firing in all cylinders um, and, and is, is possibly overcooking because of that aggressive American government spending that we, we've talked about. And although the UK government definitely isn't aggressively spending, as we know, even if it's not going down the, the absolute austerity route, um, you know, you've just pointed out to me here that we've had some some stronger than expected PMI data from the UK today, as we did from yeah. America yesterday, with manufacturing going back above fifty, and even the UK mortgage applications number looked good. So yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe so I mean, recession yeah. isn't the danger now. Maybe it's actually we're going to get some good economic news, but then where does that leave central banks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only thing that's a bit negative today was, um, you know, uh, nationwide house price index year in year to March, uh, 1.6. Uh, but, you know, it's still up, but down below the expected 2.4. But month on month, it went down by 0.2%. But we scroll down, and I mean, you know, Europe seems, seems to be struggling still. Manufacturing PMI in Europe, 46.1, beat expectations, but still, you know, below the 50 mark. Uh, but if you look at Britain's uh, data here, Manufacturing and PMI are back above you know that 50 level. Mortgage approvals beat expectations. Mortgage lending beat expectations. Net lending to individuals beat expectations. So it does seem like people are you know getting their credit cards out. What are they doing? Or in fact, not credit cards, but they are taking out mortgages and looking to buy houses. I mean, I'm, I mean, maybe that low, slightly lower price is one of the reasons why you're seeing more mortgage applications. Because yeah. you know we know that the best cure for high prices is high prices, and the best cure for low prices is low prices. But mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that. You know, if you're if you're the Chancellor of the Exchequer and you've pinned your colours to the economy, quote, turning the corner, then you're probably going to be pretty pleased to see that. And and clearly from a stock market point of view, if you do get stronger than expected uh, economic numbers, potentially that could feed through into the commodity stocks because partly because they perform, they've underperformed for such a long time. You know, mining stocks have underperformed as, as we discussed last week, I think. You know, yeah. the FTSE all world's up 50% in the last five years and the FTSE all share mining index is up about eight. So yeah. <laughs> there, there, there is some catching up to be, there is some catching up to be done that if indeed we are going to get either a dollop of inflation or a dash of economic growth or both. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting chart. This is Taylor Wimpy and uh, it hit a low back in October 2022. And since then, it's around, it's broke yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, and since then it's rallied. It's gone from oh, it down at uh, what seventy, eighty pence to one thirty forties now. So yeah. the house builders have been have rallied strongly. You know, even before the recovery was on. I mean, the market always looks ahead as far as it can. And in fact, I, I looked at the, the FTSE. It's come back a bit today, but the FTSE uh, what is it indices uh, broke eight thousand, didn't it? Yeah, FTSE two fifty here. Literally, it, it was it, that was now from the low. It was showing well, it just it's just dipped. 
down below that to 21%, which I mean, of course, below 20%. That was the lower back in October as well, same time as the Telewimpy there. But uh, it had a, a big sort of strong technical rally here. When you ever get that sort of bounce straight from the bottom, straight up, it doesn't seem to sustain too much. Yeah. It's come back down, you know, a, a, a higher low here in, in October year on. And now it's almost in bull market territory, which is 20 percent up from a low. So, um, well, you know, it, and it's interesting, yeah. you know, talking to, our, you know, talk, talk, one of the parts of my job is, 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 is helping out with podcasts or talking to the national press and national broadcasters and, there still isn't a lot of love being shown to the UK equity market. I can assure you the bulk of the questions I get are, which company is going to be the next one to leave? Why aren't we getting any IPOs? Isn't it all rubbish? And yet you've actually got an index that's pushing towards its its all-time high. You know, <clears throat> unloved yeah. can mean undervalued. And, uh, you know, as we've seen, there's been quite a lot of uh, M&A activity in the UK this year and last year. I know that the super dry bid from Julian Dunkerton's just failed and... Uh, the yeah. Elementi deal was rejected and direct line was rejected. So they're not all going through, but you've yeah. had nine deals struck this year, some of which have gone through, some of which look like they will do. And the average premium paid is, is more than 50%. So, uh, you know, I don't really seem to be giving anything that could be misconstrued as advice, but if something has underperformed for a long time it, it, and it's unloved, it, it, it could just be cheap. I mean, look at Japan. I haven't, you know, I didn't get any questions from Japan for the thick end of, you know, 10 years. And I've yeah. had more questions about Japan this year than I've had in the previous 10 years put together because just because it's reached an all-time high. So mm. it just goes to show how, how psychology can change. But really, you would be better off buying Japan 10 years ago and now what everybody's talking about. It doesn't mean Japan can't keep on going up, but if the yen yeah. stops going down, that might be a potential obstacle to it. Yeah, well, that, that is the thing, you know, it, it, private investors especially tend to look in the rear, rear view mirror a bit, don't they? And uh, they look, oh, we're cheap. You know, we're always going to be cheap. It's never going to perform... But like I said, if you if you you know had your time again now, and they were, where would you put your money now in you know the FTSE you know two fifty or whatever, or even the S and P five hundred? The S and P's rallied very strongly, you know, largely driven up by the, the mega seven. But um, you know, and it's it, interesting to see U.S. small caps are starting to catch up a little a little bit as yeah. well. I mean, the Russell two thousand has lagged the S and P very badly for a very very long period of time, and yeah. I think well, it's still the only one of the U.S. major indices that isn't making fresh all time highs. So again, if you were thinking you were going to get, heaven forbid, you know, stronger than expected economic growth on a sustained basis, and we don't know what's going to happen to US government spending after the election, but it, it seems a fair bet that you know, neither neither winner is going to want to turn off the tap straight away. Uh, that again could be interesting. You know, just look at an area that's lagged. We know UK mm -hmm. small caps have lagged, but US small caps have lagged as well. Miners have lagged. So again, I, I'm always. <laughs> Yorkshireman, fully paid up member of the awkward squad, generally yeah. more interested in what people aren't asking me about and talking to me about than, than, than what they are. For, and most of my questions are still about AI and tech, which is great. But I'm like, yeah, 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 come on, NVIDIA is now on 20 times sales. Let's let's try and see what else we can do here. Um, yeah. And and so th th those things to me, I think, are intriguing, even if you're clearly going to be brave and clearly going to have to be patient if indeed they they, 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 they do work out. But is, is that the Russell you showed me? There we That's go. That's the Russell there. Kind of two, two, right? Yeah, 2000, basically, it kept hitting that 2000 level quite a few times. And then it sort of broke above, come back low. But now it's at uh, 2100, so it seems to have broken out of that range, which is uh, which, quite nice. Which might be where the down. US 10-year Treasury is breaking down, you know, because you've actually yeah. got US Treasury yields sidling up, which... Again, you would think is the market's way of telling you there's perhaps better economic growth coming, or at least fewer interest rate cuts coming. So we're interested. We're reaching quite a, an interesting. I mean, maybe good news is going to be good news. Good economic growth, good earnings growth, duh. But generally, as we know, you know, bad news is normally good news, and good news can be slightly tricky because it means interest rates staying higher for longer are going up. Heaven forbid. So the U.S. ten-year yield is 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 sneaking higher again. Yeah, um, which two, doesn't yeah. fit very comfortably with that three to four interest rate rate cut narrative from the Fed that equity markets are embracing. So you've slightly got the bond market and the equity market now saying different things. So we'll see who's going to be right. Normally it's the yeah, bond market. Yeah, to me, that, I mean, that's the 10-year mm -hmm. uh, US government bond. And it's, yeah, it's come down from a high there, but it's bounced. And now you're seeing it breaking up above the 200-day moving average. And, and you can see here, you know, a series of uh, lower highs. Higher highs. That's quite a you know. A bullet, it, I mean, I'm not I'm not as much of a chartist as you are, mate. But that looks fairly compelling yeah, to me. Yeah, it's I bouncing say, higher, so. isn't it? That is bouncing you know, higher. It's a bit uh, and at there. the same time, if you if you look at that price chart against the gold price for the last five years, they've generally moved fairly much in in track. But actually, yeah. now gold is breaking up as the treasury price is breaking down and the treasury yield is breaking up, which again is unusual. Mm, so. 
Yeah. Uh, again, wow, to go back to our conversation of last week, the, the, the precious metal is interesting. I think it had a bash at 2250 over the long weekend uh, on response to those US PCE and PMI numbers. So again, maybe the narrative now isn't cooling and soft, but maybe economy oddly running a bit hotter than we thought, certainly on the far side of the Atlantic, and maybe it is turning the corner here. Yeah, I need to get some something with gold in it. There's some exposure to gold there. I mean, look at that. It's at 2279 there, yeah. Mm. That's looking good. And to, Again, uh, you, you would, I mean, those sort of charts, you do tend to see a bit of a pullback and a test, right? But nevertheless, yeah. that that's that's intriguing. And uh, again, if you are going to start seeing things starting to run hot, that's interesting. And gold mine, gold has lagged equities and gold miners have lagged gold. So again, if you're being a real contrarian, might be somewhere to do some research in the knowledge that you know it isn't suit it isn't suitable for everybody and these you know these can be very very risky things you need to look at you know the, the production profile of the mines you need to look at their all in sustained yeah. cost and the trend there you need to look at where they operate in case there's any risk of resource resource nationalism or fresh taxes being slapped on you need to look at management expertise you need to look at the balance sheet um, and then ultimately you need to look at the valuation and the valuation can move around a lot because the gold price moves around a lot. So earnings and dividend forecasts do. So maybe you end up having to look at net asset or book value mm. where your benchmark is probably, you know, new months, 1.7 times book value, multiple takeover of new crest. Albeit that was a very mature developer with a fairly low ASIC in a stable base because it was operating in Australia. Um, maybe you'd put a discount onto that for some of the UK quotas because they mainly operate in Africa. But, it, nevertheless, that's an interesting benchmark, and I think all maybe about Pan African resources of the UK gold mining quotas traded a discount to that book value figure. So again, if you think, if you think, and it's up to you, gold's going to keep on having a run, might be somewhere to have a look. Well, that is, and that's the UK ten year. That's up by three point five percent. Yeah, it? that's. Uh, I mean, it's come down. It's bouncing. It doesn't look as strong as the. US, it doesn't look as strong but, as the American one because I guess no. the data is not as strong right now, is it? And the inflation figure. I mean, you look yeah. at the BS, BRC, British Retail Consortium, a shop price inflation figure oh, data yeah, yeah. today. That's that's way down, 1.3% or something. That's so it, Yeah, 1.3% you know, down from the yeah, so 2.24. Yeah, well, down from 2.5 last last. So that's, that's way yeah. down. You'd expect that to be reflected in the overall CPI data when that comes out. So that is going to come in below two for a couple of months. Then the base effect starts to change a little bit. The oil price is higher again year on year, so it's not quite as simple as it looks. But at the moment, at least, you know, we, we know the UK economy isn't running as hot as the American one because part of the government's not spending like fury. Um, yeah. So uh, that might, again, might, might might change, perhaps, depending on how the elections go, uh, presumably the second half of this year. That does say a lot, though, doesn't it? When you get all the, 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 the you know... It's kind, well, of, it's oil, kind of interesting, wow. right? The wisdom of yeah. markets. It's, it's intriguing. Hearing. I haven't seen anything like that for probably since about 2014, I would imagine, when, it, when again, commodity prices are running strong and before that, 2011-12. Yeah. Like I said, they're not... I mean, I think one of the worst performers is the biggest rise of this, Fresno and um, Silver, yeah. of course. But, uh, yeah, and also Fresno has had loads of production problems in the last yeah. 12 or 18 months. It's yeah. consistently disappointed on its output, which is, again, why miners, even sitting on top of a gold or silver mine, doesn't mean you're sitting on top of a gold or silver mine. You've still got to get the stuff out the ground in a cost-efficient yeah. fashion, which is, as you've just seen from that chart, Fresno's not always been very good at recently. No, it's, uh, well, ex exactly. I mean, it, there is the option, of course. Some people go for ETFs, which you know takes out the risk yeah. of the independent business, you know, risk uh, that happens there. And of course, most of these, um, you know, resource companies are in jurisdictions that can be quite tricky to operate in. So, uh, yeah, or, or yeah, just so. remote places. So it's yeah. you know, it, it, it's it's a difficult business and. So it's, it's not quite as easy as it sounds sitting on top of a gold mine, but when they get in theory, if the price is 2250 and you're all in sustained cost is 13, 1400, there should yeah. be money pouring out the ground, frankly. But yeah, exactly. we know yeah. it's not easy to produce. Uh, it's costly to produce. Uh, so that's why supply doesn't grow very much. Um, but when you get it right, you can really, really get it right. But I would, I, I agree. I think a, if you are thinking this is right for you, then a basket of them is probably not a daft way to go about it, and a mixture yeah. of of large producers as a base, and maybe the odd little you know mini one thrown in because they are probably the smaller ones have the greater leverage into any upside, but equally clearly have a greater leverage into any downside or, or production setbacks. Yeah, and they they say actually with silver, I saw, I saw someone. Well, I don't know what relationship it is, but I mean, there's a bit of a lag factor between silver and gold. I know that, and tend to, you tend to find when gold rallies, silver does catch up uh, almost. But it, someone call it the mad auntie of gold. <laughs> so I don't, I don't okay. know what that means. But um, you no, know I, I think silver's probably more volatile because it does have more industrial uses, yeah. albeit 
it's no longer used in things like photography plates or x-ray plates. So in that respect, that's one area of industrial demand that doesn't exist anymore because we you know, because of digital because of digitalization and digital cameras. But there is a relation a historic relation. I think 80, isn't that the magic relationship, magic number, gold to silver, or something like 80 times gold to silver? Yeah. Um, but yeah. I can I can check that. But I think that's that was a number I've always had stuck in my head. But um oh, okay. You know, you know, I think gold's probably trading more expensively relative relative to that right now. So um, again, it, it, it's something that you, you generally probably see people smash into gold first if they think there's a need for either a haven or an inflation hedge potentially, and then and maybe silver afterwards. But if there's a strong economy, then then silver might be a more leveraged way into it if you think precious metals are the right way to go. Yeah, I'm just wondering, is there any big data out this week? I was comps is there services comps at BMIs? Uh, mm. Anything else? When when is um. Uh, it's probably just one of it. Any yeah, the, 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 the next UK inflation figures will be a couple of weeks, I would think. Okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next week we've you know, what have we got next? Next week we've the big ones are well, we've got interest rate decisions from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, Bank of Canada, and ECB, and we've got US consumer price inflation on Wednesday the tenth. So that's probably the next really big one on the inflation front. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ross. What I want to do now is uh, I'm going to go and research some, um, I mean, commodity ETFs, I think. I think uh, they're going to take off somehow, or maybe even look at, uh, I know there's a lot, well, in fact, the, 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 the UK market's got loads of little commodity plays. But, um, it has. It's, it's, absolutely it's, right. it's one of the reasons why it's underperformed for the last 10 years, so it'd be interesting yeah, exactly. to see if that starts to turn around. Yeah, exactly. So I'll have a look around that because I do think, you know, and especially in the, in the micro cap space, I mean, you've got, you know, they're quite high risk, but when they move, yes. they rarely move. And uh, you know, you're talking multiples. Of Again, that's probably why you need a, a, a spread of them because there will inevitably yeah. be accidents in there. You know, you, you can look at, I think, is it um, Charat Gold, I think is, you know, yeah. about a statement late last year saying that, it was going to need fresh financing to help it get this stuff out of the ground. I think Hummingbird's been weak recently again. Oh, yeah, Hummingbird's uh, yeah, so. Humming a nightmare there. So literally, they've had there are some challenges out there. Yeah, yeah there that, you go. It's not the rally, they, and then they had production problems, some of the operation problems, yeah. uh, and it's back down to the lows there. So it seemed like quite a promising rally here because it's been going down, look at that, for literally uh, 42 pence down to, well, it, it hits almost four, by four Ooh. pence. So literally, 90 odds and down. And uh, that, that it did takes some doing, and the gold price is probably up about forty percent in that yeah. time. And that's it. There's you know, so you, you know, when you look at individual companies, there can be operational risks uh, a lot yeah, of it, and definitely. so you've got to be very aware of that. And, and you may be better off going for a safer play somewhere in, in, in an ETF. Uh, marvelous stuff, Russ. Thanks for that, and uh, speak next to Wiki. Look forward to it. The Share Pickers Podcast with Justin Waite. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research.